Good afternoon and happy Canadian Thanksgiving! All you beautiful people out there watching. What time is it, Kenneth? Is it 2 on 1? 2 on 2? 2 on 1. Right on time, Costa Rica style. Live to you from Fruits Cooking Bar slash Juice Bar here at Roots Restaurant in Costa Rica, Pura Vida. Um, if you were over on my personal Facebook page about 10 minutes ago, I did a little live there promoting this um, where there was probably a lot more Canadians watching because my personal Facebook is flooded with a lot of Canadians, me being a Canuck and all. But um, I decided that for my content today, I wanted to talk about this holiday. It is a national holiday in Canada. Um, tomorrow is Thanksgiving Monday, so a lot of the gov lot, lot of businesses, schools, all of that will be closed. It's a nice little holiday, a little break. It's always the second Sunday in October. Um, and I was doing a little bit of research because, to be quite honest, I've spent my whole entire life celebrating Thanksgiving and for me it was just all about the food. <laughs> I do recall doing a lot of studying back in school. Um, studying art class, <laughs> more like it, in elementary school where we talked about the where Thanksgiving holiday came from and all of that. Um, and we used to do a lot of stuff relating to, oh look at that, Kenneth has called up um, me live on his phone so I can I can watch me being watched by you <laughs> and I guess I can see comments Leone saying happy Thanksgiving from Toronto amen what's the weather like are you guys having an I remember what was what year was it two I was living on Queen Street West in Toronto and I had a huge back patio and I had for the first time ever I had my whole entire family my mom my dad my sisters my brother-in-law my nieces and nephews over for Thanksgiving and we sat on the back patio and I actually barbecued asparagus I did the whole turkey and all of that but we sat and enjoyed it on the back patio it was so warm it was like 28 degrees or something like that it must have been 2008 maybe Raquel is watching um, let's see how we got Sven watching sending some love beautiful Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so what was I talking about? I was talking about the origins. The origins. So apparently from what I've deduced, even though in art class growing up we used to do a lot of stuff relating to the pilgrims and all of that story, in Canada we actually subscribed a lot more to the reasons of the Europeans, obviously us being part of, you know, being so closely linked to the Queen and, and Britain and all of that. Um, but originally, <laughs> sorry. There's ice in my coconut water. Yeah. Originally, we were just, uh, we started doing it in November. Um, it became a national holiday, I think in like 1957 or something like that. They switched up and decided to start doing it in October because it was kept falling into the same week as Remembrance Day after the World Wars, which was November 11th in Canada. We celebrate our, and remember, we don't celebrate, but we remember all of the, the veterans that lost their lives in the war and that happens every November 11th. So they switched up the date and now officially it's the second weekend of October. And it's mostly just about celebrating the harvest, which makes sense that we do in October because that's a great time if you're Canadian to be eating all of the amazing harvest food, like apples, pears, all the squashes, a lot of the vet fruits and vegetables that have been growing all summer still are, are at their peak towards uh, September and October. So for me, and it's always been about this for me, it's just been about the food. Even if there was more to the story, it was always just about the food. So that's our little brush up in history. I don't really know the whole story about American Thanksgiving. Maybe someone can enlighten me on that. But I do know that it is, from my experience, Thanksgiving seems to be a bit more... Yeah, I have that turned on. Um, <laughs> distracted. Kenneth just put his hand into a burning hot pan <laughs> to see if it was on before he touched it. I was like, it's on! Um, what was I talking about? American Thanksgiving. You guys in America said to take, take it really seriously. I feel like it's as big as holiday almost as Christmas. Like, people fly across the country to be with their families and get together for Thanksgiving. Whereas in Canada, I mean, we travel a lot, but it's not, people aren't gonna take time off work and whatnot to get together for Thanksgiving. I know my family is all at my mom's. I think they did the big Thanksgiving dinner, maybe tonight, the Pearson clan. I think they're doing it at my mother's house, which you guys will have seen her kitchen if you tuned into my live back in August and then one in September where I did from my mom's place. But enough about the education. I think this is part of my genetic code to talk about the origins of the holiday because my mom, dad, teachers, sisters, teachers, brother-in-law teachers about like the need to share pointless and pointful facts. So that's what I have to say about Thanksgiving. But let's get down to what it's really what's really important about it. Food. The food. So today I'm talking about two plant-based versions of some dishes. Let's see what's going on here. This is fun. 
We've got Marina watching from Canada. Mirka's watching from Finland. Romana saying happy Thanksgiving to you and your crew. That means you, Kenneth. Thank you, happy. <laughs> it's me and Kenneth. We don't do Thanksgiving here in Costa Rica. It's not a thing no. here. We're just, just grateful every day. For just pure, Christmas. Just Christmas. <laughs> yes. And we're grateful for the Pura Vida life. Yeah. Every day here in Costa Rica. Raquel is saying hello from Arcata, California. Mandy's watching. Hi. So, so fun. Mel is waving. Mandy saying hi from Jordan. What? God, it's so cool, man, seeing where people watch from. Chris is waving. Meg McGill saying hello. Hi, Meg. Oh, uh, so much fun. Okay, so before we get any further into this, if you know of anyone that's home on this Sunday afternoon uh, that could use a little bit of enlightenment about <laughs> vegan Thanksgiving, go ahead and share this, this live. <laughs> really important stuff we're talking about here. Um, and I'm going to show you what the first dish we're going to be making here is. A bada bing. What on earth is that? My guys in the kitchen just saw me take this out of the oven and they're like, what is that chef? It is beautiful. I said, yeah, I know it's beautiful. It is a, how would I say this? Calabaza de mantaquilla, mm -hmm. rellena, rellena. Is that right? right? Stuffed butternut squash. So butternut squash would be calabaza de mantaquilla. Mantaquilla means butter, calabaza pumpkin. So it's like a butter pumpkin and rellena is it rellena? Yeah, uh -huh. rellena is stuffed or relleno, depending on the male or female version of what you're stuffing. So that's what that is. And we're going to cut this open right now so you can see how beautiful it is. So I've actually, and we're going to do the technique. We're going to show you. Actually, I'm going to get some oil heating up in the pan right now. So this is, we're going to make the stuffing live here and then we're going to stuff another one. But I made this one yesterday in preparation. So that oil is super hot. So before I cut into this, I'm going to get a couple of my ingredients frying up in the pan here. And to start, it is going to be, where is my onions over here? So you're going to got onion here. This is about a half of a small red onion and one good clove of garlic minced. So I'm going to toss those in. And this is going to be the base of our flavors getting started here. And because this pan is super hot, I'm going to get a couple of other things in there that will help from, to keep the onion and garlic from burning. So I'm going to add in just some diced up mushroom. So, so good. So this is like a, cup, well, a cup's worth. Get that. That smells good already, hey, Kenneth? Mm -hmm. Onions and garlic in a frying pan. A little bit of oil. This is food at its simplest delicious finest. Okay, so while that's going, let's get in and cut this squash, shall we? So I got my knife here, so, so pretty. You can get a close in, close up of that. And I've looked at it, you know, I've actually stuffed, like done it like I've trussed a turkey, just to hold it all together here. I'm gonna cut in there, I'm gonna cut in a couple spots here, so we can get a good idea of what this is gonna look like. I haven't done this recipe ever. <laughs> I should show you, I'm gonna show you in a second here. Oh my God. Come on! How pretty is that, you guys? Come on, is that pretty or what? Let me see. Most pretty is delicious. So pretty. And look at how soft that squash is. See, calabaza de mantequilla rellena. Raquel is giving me my Spanish lesson. She says I've done it correctly. Raquel says, gracias, chef. Marina says, this is awesome. I live on an orchard with a little independent markets all around me. So great, so, so good. So this is what we're making here today, my friends. So I'm just gonna give my mushrooms and my onions a little bit of a, whoop, a little bit of a mix. Bones falling all over the place. So good. Jerry would love this because it's vegan. We made a stuffed butternut squash with rice and pecans. It's really, we're celebrating Canadian Thanksgiving, Jer. That's what's up in the house today. Jerry's over at the restaurant right now having a bite with the, with the, with the boys. Okay, so next up, we'll get the rest of this going here. I've got the onions, the garlic, these are browned up real nice. I'm gonna add in some flavorings here, which we're gonna start with. Two of my favorite things in the world, fresh rosemary, and I had my fresh thyme, but it seems to have blown away. So I'm not gonna worry about it, but fresh rosemary, you guys have all seen and know this if you've ever spent much time in the kitchen. And I've already gone and sliced up some rosemary and thyme here. I'm gonna add that to my pan. It's got a little bit of water in it. I just prepared a lot of these ingredients yesterday. So this is the like rosemary, thyme, sage, all traditional holiday 
smells and flavors. Like this smell, Kenneth, this is what anyone that celebrates from a food aspect, Christmas and Thanksgiving in North America, this is what their kitchen smells like at the holidays. Isn't that delicious? Yeah. And look at that. So next up is a little bit of celery. Again, super traditional flavoring in many, many cuisines, many, many dishes. But just an awesome um, flavor base. Any any stuffing, like it, traditionally at Thanksgiving, what we do is our um, stuff. I'm, I'm mostly giving Kenneth the education here because I know a lot of you guys are, are watching probably celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas and know these flavors. But if you remember, remember we did a Thanksgiving brunch here uh, last year for American Thanksgiving. So I did like the whole shebang. I did stuffed turkey, we did potatoes, we did gravy, mushroom gravy, I did a vegan stuffing, I did free stuffing. So the guys in the kitchen were like, what is happening? What is all of this stuff? This is super weird. So um, traditional stuffing is made with bread and they usually have some sort of flavor base, just like what we're doing here. My mom used to always put in like sausage as well. So it would be sausage and bread stuffing with all these mixed vegetables. Um, so we're kind of mimicking that with our stuffing and this is gonna be a rice stuffing. So we've got all of those amazing flavors in there. This is the finished product, by the way. So this was some of the, that I left over yesterday. So this is what we're going for here today. And you can swap out any of these ingredients you want. And I will show you, this is the version, this is the recipe. <laughs> is it backwards? It's probably backwards. But there's the title, stuffed butternut squash. And then I have just one line here. Add some carrot, celery, raisin, walnut, sage, thyme, rosemary. That is the extent of the recipe for this today. This down here is the recipe for chocolate pumpkin. Um, brownies, which I'm going to share with you guys in the comments, but there's no recipe for what I'm doing here. I think I saw it at some point on the internet and decided that's something I want to try to make, so we're just making it up as we go. Feel free to swap out any of these vegetables for anything that you feel good, and feel free to swap out any of the other ingredients, like cranberries. So this is a re an ingredient I've had a lot of trouble finding here in Costa Rica, fresh. You can buy them frozen, and I did find them just this week dry for the first time ever without any added sugar or anything. So I grabbed a few of these bags. I'm gonna be using them quite a bit over the holidays. So I've just added a bit of cranberry and that's gonna give us that traditional sour taste. Cranberry sauce. I think I did a red, a Moira, red raspberry orange sauce when we did Thanksgiving here last year. Because mm -hmm. um, I couldn't get cranberries. But um, this is gonna give us a really traditional festive flavor. And look at the colors are super festive. Those red cranberries in there with the green celery. Woo, woo, so good. Then, this is going to be our plant-based protein. Instead of the sausage or anything else, we're going to add in some broken up, I've got some just some pecan pieces and some sunflower seeds. And I'm going to toss those into this relatively dry pan just to get them toasted a little bit. Yum, yum, yum. This pan's on high heat. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff is watching. He says I'm amazing. You're amazing, Jeff. Let's see what's going on here. We've got Melissa saying it looks lummy. Mel Haven saying she's coming for dinner. Come on down. Come on down to Costa Rica, Mel. Sydney says it looks divine. Yes, it is vegan. This is vegan and gluten-free what we're doing here today. Both of the recipes. The next one we're gonna do is a raw vegan shepherd's pie. So you're gonna wanna tune in for that. I use the term shepherd's pie very loosely because it has nothing to, it looks like a shepherd's pie, but it's not shepherd's pie. Um, Marina's gonna go make this. Awesome. Raquel is vegan. Mel is all about, she says it's vegan amazingness. Um, this is super, super fun. Sydney's watching, she can't wait. When are you coming, Sydney? She says she can't wait for me to cook when she gets here. Me and my team. Tim is watching from Slovakia. Meg McGill's coming back in November. Oh my God, this is so exciting. I love this, I love this. There's a bunch of guests that just checked in today. We've got like 70 guests here this week and I've met a whole bunch of them that have been watching these um, lives weekly. I love it. So the next ingredient from my Rhythmia portion cup is rice. And I'm just using white rice because my friends, that's what I had cooked. You could use brown rice, you could use quinoa, you could use couscous, you could use bulgur, you could use amaranth, any grain you want. But this is what I'm using as a gluten-free substitute for bread. I'm just gonna heat that through because this rice was pre-cooked. It was a leftover from the buffet the other night. So I'm just letting that do its thing. And that is the stuffing. And like I said, you could substitute any of this stuff. You wanna add in some sun-dried tomatoes. Chopped up chestnuts would be Mm, so good in that. You could add in some feta cheese even. You know, add in any flavors that you like and you want for a nice substantial filling. And, and that's, and Bob's your uncle. So that is our filling. Now, what's the next step you ask? Well, what I should have told you is the first step is pre-roasting your butternut squash. So these are my, these is, this is my other butternut squash. So I roasted two butternut squash. 
We're live on the Facebook. Did you just arrive today? Yes, today. Welcome. Thank you. What's your name? Justin. Justin, welcome. I'm Meg. I'm Meg. And this is Kenneth. Hey, Kenneth. <laughs> um, so what I did yesterday is I took two butternut squashes, one for this display model and one for you guys to show you guys today. And all I did was cut it down, cut it in the middle down, cut it in the middle, cut it in half down the middle. So it was just like this. And then placed it face down on a baking sheet. I didn't even poke holes in it or anything. I just baked it off at like 350 degrees. Um, for about 35 minutes till it was nice and soft. And all I wanted it soft enough to, so that I could do this. We need to make this so there's space. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of room here to be stuffing it with anything. So I didn't look at, I didn't even remove the seeds. Like I was super lazy yesterday. I was in a rush. So today all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna scoop out this, the seeds. So this is the base of the squash. So this is all of the reproductive goodness there. So we scoop that out and all of a sudden we have this awesome cavity. I'm gonna do it on both sides like that and then I'm gonna make some little extra room for stuffing it so I'm just gonna because I cooked this so it's just soft enough I don't want to cook it so it was super mushy because we're gonna put it back in the oven um, but I just made it so that it's soft enough that I mean it's still pretty tough you can see but I wanted to be able to get my spoon or a knife in there to just make a bit of a, a little cavern for stuffing I'm just taking a bit more of that out same idea if you're like doing a stuffed avocado, it's always really um, good to like remove the pit and then use a spoon to make a little bit more room so that you can put more filling. Because as much as it's about the avocado and the roast squash, it's also mostly about the filling. Well, when it comes, from, when it comes to avocados, no, it's really about the avocado, let's be real. <laughs> the filling is just, is just gravy, but I love avocados. And we're not gonna throw this out, we're gonna keep this, this filling and it's a great base for a soup and whatnot. So then all we need to do is take our stuffing and I'm gonna use this that I made yesterday because it's fully cooked through. And you just place it into the cavity like so. Look at how pretty that is. And you could do all of this the day before. You could go, as long as your filling and your butternut squash are relatively cool before you do this step, what we could do is we could do this part of the process. I would put more, like I would mound this. I'm gonna do it, just do some of this. Mound this up super high so that you can almost, I've got some just twine, and this is just regular old baking twine, anything you do for like a pot roast or whatnot. And I'm just gonna tie it in, you know, however, however many places you think you need. I do a three or four will suffice. And tie it in nice and tight. And this is A, just to keep it together, but also it makes it look like a real roast, right? I mean, it is a real roast, it's just a vegetable roast, but it makes, it looks a lot more reminiscent of beef. If you were gonna slice this in little individual portions, you could do a lot more. You could maybe even truss it like every inch or so, so that you can slice your pieces and they're not gonna fall apart too much. Like you have a, 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 a tie for every portion type of thing to hold it together and then people can remove the string at the table. And the other thing you could do is you could have, we could have lied this whole piece of rosemary inside just to impart even more flavor. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick this because it'll look pretty and it will impart some flavor as it's in the oven. And I'm just gonna roast, then I'll place this on a baking sheet, the same baking sheet maybe that I did my original squash roast. And I'll place that and I'll just bake it so it gets really, really soft, heats and cooks all the way through. And then we'll have our amazing finished product that we looked at earlier. What do you think about that, my friends? Super easy. Super low cost. It's all vegetables. Like you're not gonna be killing the bank for that at all. Um, so let's see what else is going on here. Ha, Erin. One of our guests is just posted that she's watching us live from the cleanse room. You know what that means? It means she's having a colon cleanse and watching me cook. Is that weird? I don't think that's weird at all. Sounds like something I do. Melissa's watching. Is coming back. Is coming in December. That's amazing. Sydney has got no set date, but sometimes in the spring or summer she's coming. Lorraine is watching from, where are you, Lorraine? Are you in Italy right now? She watches every week, so good to see you, chef. I've been watching your Instagram, by the way. You've got some phenomenal stuff that you're posting. What was it, that avocado plate that you posted this morning? Gorgeous. Mel's asking if this recipe is listed anywhere. Currently it's not, there isn't a recipe. Um, I will find something as close to possible and I'll share it in the comments. And Tiffany's laughing. Tiffany Lynn, Tiffany, you're coming back soon. When are you like in the next 10 days or something? Tiffany loves that she's, um, she says, I love that Aaron's watching it from the cleanse room. So Tiffany is a, best, a past guest and she'll be back again soon. So fun. Alrighty. Wasn't on your phone. Dish. 
raw vegan shepherd's raw vegan shepherd's pie. I'm gonna call that up over here again. We're having a bit of Wi-Fi issue right now here in Costa Rica in general. Even my Wi-Fi at my home. I've got it. I'm just I've got the Facebook. There we go. There we go. Um, drink break. Before I do anything, I'm gonna mention one other favorite flavor of mine for the holidays, ginger. I love me some ginger. Levi, if you're watching, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ginger is a root vegetable. This is um, the fresh ginger, if you've never seen it. And here with me, we've recently started offering ginger tea 24 seven, right? We, yeah, we serve it right through the night. And all it is is this beautiful organic fresh ginger sliced up, steeped, uh, in hot water for hours, 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 until it becomes this amazing infusion. So I, what I've done here is I just poured some of the tea to show you the color, and this is this is what the, the ginger. We cook it and take and infuse so much of this ginger spicy goodness into the tea. Like, look at the color. Fresh ginger, super yellow and white, dark, beautiful, wasted ginger. This tea, this ginger is, I mean, it still is pretty spicy. tasty. It doesn't have the same super spiciness that fresh ginger does. But ginger tea, if there's anything you want to make, something you want to make at home to sip all day that's really good for digestion, really, really grounding, um, a great coffee alternative in the morning, this ginger tea is really, really good and I've been recommending it to a lot of people because people, a lot of people are cold right now with all the rain that we've been having. A lot of my staff have just been feeling a they, they, little bit of a feeling of a, of, a, of a cold coming on here at Rhythmia, the, the housekeeping and stuff like that. So this ginger tea with a little bit of honey and a squeeze of half a lemon is really, 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 really great immune booster. And if you do, do feel like you are getting sick, then take this tea, and again, just ginger and water steeped for hours. Take the tea, throw it in the blender with a bit of honey, as I said, juice from a lemon and a, and a garlic clove, and that's a really, really great, you know, cold fighter, cold fighting concoction. Okay, let's move on. So we're gonna make this, raw vegan shepherd's pie and again literally the recipe here you know what turn the camera around for a sec and I'm going to show you guys because I think if we do it this way how do we do it there we go is it still backwards yeah it's still backwards isn't it so this was the recipe roasted with rice stuffing with just a list of ingredients and then this next recipe lentil I can't even read it. Lentil mushroom raw vegan shepherd's pie. Absolutely nothing listed in the ingredients because then next we go to chocolate pumpkin brownies. So there's no recipe. We're making this up as we go. You want to come say hi? I was going to try to steal this. Try it. Take <laughs> it. No, take it. Take so. it. But it looks delicious. You can take it. Oh. So this is stuffed with Scott. Scott's never been to my Facebook Live before. <laughs> Welcome. I just came for the food. That's what everyone comes for. I'm surprised Christian hasn't come over yet. He's sitting over there. Yeah, I can see him. Delicious. I can see him eyeing it up. So did you see how we made that? It's amazing. It's just a really simple fake roast to celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving. Take a piece or take the whole plate. You guys can take the whole plate. Have at it. We made a whole other one that's going to go in there. What, what, what's for dessert? There's no dessert. <laughs> I was going to make brownies. That's the brownies. only... I actually have a recipe Why for pumpkin brownies, but I decided to just do this Hi, instead. Folks. <laughs> what did you Christian make? and Scott meet Facebook Live. Uh, People from Finland, Jordan, Italy, all over the world are watching right now. What do you use? Is that dessert? That's coconut bacon. It has nothing to do with my Facebook Live today. Coconut bacon. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Where's the turkey? There is no turkey. This is plant based. Oh, there's cashews though. I'm about to make a raw vegan lentil mushroom shepherd's pie though. That's what we're working on next. I have to take this we'll do it. All right. Catch me live on Friday. I was just going to say, when Friday's you at, uh, what is it, 2 p.m. Costa Rican time. But it no, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Costa Rican time. 11 a.m. California time. Which would be 3 p.m. Eastern time Eastern for all the Canadians watching yeah. up in the, in the Toronto area. So that's my Facebook Live. And then what we got? About Your Miracle on Saturdays, Saturday, Jerry or Candice, and then on Mondays, Dr. Jeff. 6 p.m. Costa Rica time. Yeah. Do you know what you're talking about this week on yours? Uh, I do, but it's not in my head. Right now, Just so. go to the Rhythmia Facebook page where you already are if you're watching this, and all of the our Facebook lives are listed in the events every week. 
So if you haven't liked the Rhythmia page, which I assume you all have if you're watching, like it and you'll get notifications, not only of the events when they get posted, but also a notification as soon as we're live. It'll pop up if you're on Facebook, you'll, and then it'll remind you when we're live. And if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, get on that because then you get an email every week from Jerry listing all the content we're doing. It lists all the amazing uh, work guest workshop speakers that are coming, like all of the luminary people. Some amazing things. people are coming here. There's some really awesome, awesome people coming here. Today we have Luke Sellers arriving. He's going to be doing a workshop this week. Um, next week we've got Taita, sold out. Um, so, Panesh decided the week after out. that, sold out. But amazing, Gamble, the gambles Gamble. in November. And there's, but we're announcing new speakers. I think we have speakers right now through mid 2019. So we're always announcing it. So you got to be on the newsletter and on our Facebook page to be legit. And you can also follow me personally because I'm always talking about Rhythmia too on my personal stuff. Yeah. I love it. I love all the Rhythmia things. And she talks about some really interesting stuff on her page. I do. I talk about a lot of really personally interesting stuff on my private page. So go ahead and friend me. Welcome to my world. All right, I'm out here. Uh, Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so let's move on to this dish, shall we? I haven't made very many dirty jokes on the Rhythmia Facebook page, have I? Kenneth, you can vouch. I'm pretty, pretty well behaved over here. I haven't even sworn yet in this Facebook Live, have I? Maybe I have. Okay, so how are we gonna do this, you ask? I'm not really sure. I'm gonna figure it out right now. So I figured for the topping of a shepherd's pie, it's traditionally some sort of potato puree. Today we're not gonna use potato because this is raw, and raw potatoes not don't do it. So we're gonna use cauliflower. So I've got here a bite of cauliflower, and I'm gonna just toss this into my food processor. And that's how we're cooking here today, kids. Everything is going to be done in the machine for the most part. So I'm just breaking up these florets of cauliflower. This is probably about uh, a half of a small head. Raw food, the beauty of it, is it's not really, it doesn't really need to be precise unless you're doing like fermenting and things like that. But even that, I mean, it's pretty flexible. Uh, as far as quantities and things like that, so I always have just eyeballed. It was really hard when I've written the two cookbooks that I have and used to write for magazines and stuff, having to actually stop and measure things because I never do just as in general as a cook but with raw food it's mostly just about achieving textures and flavors that you enjoy and that you're aiming for so for something like a fake <laughs> just woke up the dog even um <laughs> it's all good we got a bunch of people at the pool like what is happening over there um we're trying to do a fake this is like a shepherd's pie so we want this topping to be like potato puree so we want this to be soft and creamy hence why I'm using the machine so we're gonna grind up this cauliflower and we're gonna add some a few other ingredients to make it reminiscent in texture of um, potato puree but I'm gonna show you real quick that accidental <laughs> quick puree that we just did here has made ca cauliflower rice so this is the thing um, especially since the keto paleo low carb shizzle came about People stopped eating rice, which I will never stop eating rice, as you just saw. But if you want a low carb version or for any reason you can't do grains, grinding up your cauliflower in a food processor like this makes the same texture as, cauli as, as rice. So you could use this and cook, you could stir fry this as you would stir fry rice. You could you actually, you could use this in place of rice and that stuffing you just made if you want. Um, but I thought I'd just share that with you because this was an accidental <laughs> thing. So I'm gonna let that go a little bit. Um, I just added some salt. I'm actually gonna add one more ingredient here garlic powder. So this is just a bit of garlic powder um, that's sticking together a little bit because of the humidity here. It's quite humid. So this is just going to give us a bit of flavor. Obviously this is cauliflower, not going to taste like potatoes, but you get the picture. Here we go. So I just wanted to blend that up a little bit so the water starts to come out because the next ingredient we're going to add here is cashews. So these, this is what's gonna give a, a richness and a, and a creaminess and a denseness to this potato, um, fake potato topping. So I'm gonna add about, what is that, about a cup and a half. Oh, and you know what else I'll add while we're at it? A bit of soy milk. You could add almond milk, coconut milk, cashew milk. I've just had some soy milk candy. And that's just gonna help with the puree process. I'm gonna add in a couple tablespoons of that to get started. <laughs> Scraping down the sides, what up? Scraping down, 
oh that smells yummy and because cauliflower a lot of some people don't like raw cauliflower it's got a bit of a pungency to it the cashews are going to help cut that down um, that pungency and give it a bit more of a, a smooth creaminess it's a hot sun on my butt right now <laughs> I literally just was like, why am I so hot? Like the sun is right on the back of my legs and my butt. <laughs> it's a really hot sun in Costa Rica, my friends. We are super close to the equator. And because there's not a ton of liquid in this mixture, it's you've got to scrape it a lot because of the, it just wants to stick to the sides. So we do a little bit of blending and, and, and scraping. That's as far as I'm going to take it. So I'm going to take this clean bowl and I'm just going to scrape this into the bowl and then I'll show you what it's going to look like. Yes, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. And I used, FYI, roasted cashews in this because I like the flavor. Raw cashews have their purpose. Like when I'm doing like raw cheesecakes and stuff, I like the raw cashews because they're very mild in flavor and they just take really big, big bits. They do the creaminess and the texture, but they take on whatever flavor I'm cooking. Um, I'm, or I'm, I'm trying to emanate, whereas the toasted ones, like the ones I have here, they're unsalted, roasted. Um, it's nuttier, and that's what I wanted. I wanted nutty flavor. And there'll be people that are in the raw food world that'll be like, well, that's not a raw dish. Obviously, it's not, but it's still vegan, and it's as close as we're going to get today, my friends. So I just scraped that out. I'm not going to go crazy washing it because we're going to use it again for the next phase. But this is, I mean, this texture is good. I kind of like that it's going to, it's still a little bit chunky. It's almost like a rustically mashed potato. And you can see by the texture that it's gonna be just fine to emanate the idea of a potato puree. Let's take a little break. Dun, dun, dun. People saying hi to Scott and Christian. Lorena's in Spain now. Oh, so fun. Some amazing people coming there. Yeah, there's some really, really great. For some reason, I can't see all the comments. We're still live, right? We didn't go off the air. We're still live? Is this thing on? Okay, what time is it? Where are we at for time, friends? 2.34. I better get my ass in here. Um, what was I doing? Making shepherd's pie. <laughs> so, for the lentil part, the, the base. So we've got the topping. Now we're going to work on the base. Traditionally, we bake it in a pan. Today, we're going to set it on the plate in a really pretty way. So, what am I going to use for my base? I'm going to stand over here and do this. Is the lighting okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, I've got a whole bunch of stuff here that we're going to that we're going to use, and let's get rocking and rolling, shall we? So, what I've got here are lentils, and these are lentils that I have just soaked overnight. They were just really uh, there's some simple green lentils that I've soaked overnight, so now they are soft. You can see I can mush them apart in my hand. We could have gone so far as to sprout them for several days so they'd actually grow little tails and if you're curious about sprouting you can um, go back through my Facebook lives and I did a whole Facebook live on sprouting legumes and the, and the like. I don't remember when but I'll try to remember to put that in the comments if you want to go back. Uh, but all I do is just soak these overnight. So I'm going to add to my food processor a couple of two cups let's say. And if you want this recipe you should be writing this down as we go. Just kidding. Because there isn't one. But about two cups of lentils and then my other meaty commodity, mushrooms. So I'm gonna add since we're not cooking them. Um, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna add in some more of those festive flavors, rosemary and thyme. Sage is an ingredient that I've had a lot of trouble finding here in Costa Rica in a whole form. I've been able to find fully powdered. That's not really ideal for what I'm doing here. So we're skipping the sage today. I'm gonna to put in a pinch of salt. I'm gonna start this blending. Now I don't wanna go like too much with this because I wanna keep texture. Oh, Kenneth, you wanna show that? And it smells freaking phenomenal. So that's just lentils, mushrooms, and, and the seasoning. Now we're gonna add in another couple of flavors. We're gonna add in a bit of red onion or shallot. 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 <laughs> I don't know why I just had an accent. Shallot, which is a slightly milder onion, member of the onion family. You can call it a shallot if you want. I think I've been hanging out with Fiona too much. It's one of our amazing English 
lasses that works here. And a clav, a clav, a clav, a clove of garlic. But I'm not gonna toss this in whole because then it, it won't get pulsed up because I'm just pulsing this. I'm not doing the blend. I'm gonna only put half of this in because it's pretty big. So I'm just gonna give a really gentle cut. Give it a little bit, give the machine just a tiny bit of help. Toss that in. Um, and a bit of celery and carrot. So this is some grated carrot that I had left over from a salad and just some really chunky bits of celery. Again, the same kind of flavor notes that we went for with the other dish. And some sauteed eggplant, only because I had this kicking around. And this tex the texture of sauteed eggplant is super meaty. So I'm gonna add that in as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pulse this up to combine. over there laughing at me. Can't have fun in your own kitchen where can you have fun? My mom used to say something different. I'm not gonna tell you what that is because that would embarrass her. It has to do with farts though. <laughs> she used to, we used to say in our family if you can't do it in your own home where can you do it? Fart I mean. So look at that. So good. So there's one last ingredient I want to add this. This is pretty traditional when it comes to shepherd's pie corn whole kernels of corn so I'm just gonna I have these that I had on the buffet the other day so I just took them off the buffet and I'm just gonna cut the kernels because that's all I want I'm just cutting the kernels off of a cooked cob of corn so this is obviously not raw you could add in fresh cut raw corn kernels for the same idea just break it up enough so I can toss it in there and then I'm just gonna pulse that sorry I'm making a big mess today Kenneth and then this is just gonna be a quick pulse because I don't wanna blend up these corn. I want them to stay. Perfect. There we go. So there's our components to our raw vegan shepherd's pie that I'll save a piece for Candice later. Hi! <laughs> I'll give you everything. Okay, so when it comes now time to plate this bad boy, I've got my little ring mold. So it's really, really tiny. Um, you can buy these in all different sizes at Kitchen Supply, Restaurant Supply, Chefy, Chefy type stores all over the place. This is the one I happen to have. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just place that in the middle of my plate. If I had some sort of sauce to go with this, like a miso gravy, a mushroom gravy, even a pesto or something would be really, really nice, I would do a little beautiful thingy. What do you call that? Splash of color on the bottom of the plate, but we don't, we don't have that luxury today. So what I'm gonna do is I got my ring mold on the plate and I'm gonna take some of this meatless, but meaty because of the mushrooms and all of the lentils and goodness, and place that inside my mold. And I wanna make this fairly high. So I'm gonna go up about halfway, well, almost all the way, so that when I compact it, can you get a close up of this? You're seeing what's going on, Kenneth? Yeah? Um, so then we're gonna pack it down, because the idea here is we're gonna remove this ring mold and it's just gonna be this beautiful display of raw vegan deliciousness. I'm gonna get in around the sides with a paper towel. Like so. And then we take some of our cauliflower puree, cauliflower cashew puree, puree. I can't talk today. Put that on top and again, pack it down. We just want to pack it down tight enough that we can remove this ring mold and nothing's going to fall. It's going to stay into a nice, beautiful stack. Like so, are we ready for the big reveal? Ready? Hallelujah. What? Come on. How pretty is that? You know what will make it even prettier? A little bit of beautiful pea shoots on top. And... How pretty is that? Does it look really pretty or what? Nice, delicious as well. And just a little bit of rosemary. What do you guys think? Would you eat that for Thanksgiving? I would eat it. And I think I might have that for lunch after this live. So that's it, my guys, my guys, my friends, and guys and gals. How quick was that? Super quick, right? 
Um, again, you can substitute. We did lentils today. You could substitute in like sprouted garbanzos. You could even swap out the lentils for something like quinoa or rice or something if you want to have a little, something a little bit different. But that might is just the base. You could use um, portobello mushrooms, swap out all the vegetables, add in some red peppers, add in some sun-dried tomatoes, mix and match your spices. You could do like a curried version of this, adding like curried spices in the base. The options are endless. It's all up to you and your taste buds, my friends. So that is all that we have for you guys today. I'm just gonna go over here real quick. Whoops! Check up on what is next week. What are we doing next week? Next week will be Sunday, October 14th. Ooh, rice is nice. So I have in my notes for next week, we're, gonna, we're talking about rice fitting. I've been talking about that all day today, but we're going to do different versions of sushi. We're going to talk about lentil rice burgers, make some fritters, maybe even do some risotto if I'm feeling fancy. So next week it's going to be many different ways to do rice and I'll do something sweet as well. Maybe I'll do a nice healthy version of rice pudding or rice, something sweet and delicious for dessert. So that's what's up. Welcome back. So happy to be here. Can't wait to cook more with you guys. As always, if you have any ideas, recommendations, things you want to learn about, recipes you want to see, send me a note in the comments or send me a private message or Rhythmia's Facebook page a private message and let us know because we always need ideas and inspiration for what we're going to do. So enjoy the rest of your Sunday, especially all you Canadians out there. Happy Thanksgiving um, and hope you all have the day off tomorrow. And if you do, spend it with friends and family and practice gratitude every day. It is an attitude. We don't need a holiday really, but it is a nice reminder and a nice excuse to eat all of this type of food. So enjoy. Talk to you later. Love you. Mwah. Kenneth. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you.